I mean, let's say you want to protect your vehicle, but you're not so comfortable with ceramic coatings. What do you do? Hi, I'm Ivan. I'm Nick. This is DIY Detail. Today, we're going to show you how to protect your car, your, your SUV, your truck, without going all the way to a ceramic coating. But first, we need to wash it. This Honda CRV is in rough shape. Going to show you some B-roll of the paint. Uh, it's been snowing here in Omaha. This paint needs some love. So we're going to do the foam rinse foam method, but this is kind of our back to basic series. We're in our new shop that looks quite old. We haven't done anything to it. And so there's no foam can. There's no pressure washer here. This is a, a video for all of you out there, right? No fancy tools are necessarily required for this. Uh, we do have a couple of sprayers that we're going to be using, but nothing super high tech. No, and the sprayers are basically just to speed up the process a little bit. Exactly. They're going to speed the process up, but you don't need them. For the purpose of this video, we're going to use them. So I'm using a foamer, not a foam cannon, but this is actually just a garden hose attachment that allows you to get foam. And we don't even have a trigger nozzle for it where that uh, not set up yet. We'll put it that way. This thing is cheap, but it works, kind of. So we're not putting on the thick foam that you're used to seeing with the pressure washer, but we are getting some good, incredible suds action here. For the folks at home, Ivan, why are we foaming the car first? Why well, are we pre-treating it before we're washing it? We're foaming the dry car because now the soap, the incredible suds, has more time to react and it's not fighting with water on the surface. The other thing is, if we start hosing off with all the grit that was on this vehicle, we actually risk scratching it with that grit. Makes sense to me. Gonna give it a bit of dwell time, then we're gonna pressure wash it off. No, wait, there is no pressure washer. We're gonna have to hose it off, right? Right. So Nick is rinsing it off here, but he is not being too particular about it because we're just gonna be foaming it again in a few seconds. The reason for this rinse is the incredible sides has broken down a lot of that surface dirt and a lot of that grit, and it's gonna take it away with it. Then from there, we get to apply another round of foam, and with that final round of foam, then we can do our contact wash. Now that Nick has rinsed off this side completely, I'm gonna use our IK foamer with all clean diluted 15 to one, and I've added just a little bit of incredible suds to give us more dwell time and more suds to get these wheels really nice and clean. And again, you want to hose the wheels off before you start brushing. So we did the foam first. These have a lot of grit in them, so we want to rinse them out first, getting the heavy grit out first, then we apply our solution and start uh, doing the contact wash with our brushes. Also notice that the wheels had a bit of iron contamination on them, so I'm going to add some iron remover to the mixer. We should see a little bit of red coming out of these. And you get the requisite uh, foam over the bucket look, which is yeah, the mandatory for internet car washing. Exactly. The volcano has to happen. And now we've gotten the grit off the vehicle. We can start with our contact wash. And no, we don't need to use a two bucket method. We've taken the grit off the vehicle in the first round. Now we have a luxurious bath of incredible suds here. And we start the contact wash. Nick, do you want to get the wheels while I do the contact wash? Absolutely. It's, uh, it's a balancing act with all the water on the ground with the squeegee and the, yeah, the hose, but we're making it work. All right, I got my wheel bucket here. Luckily, the shop does have a drain, but it's still wet ground. And today in Omaha, there's actually a snowstorm going on outside. And to the point where they shut the schools down and all that fun stuff. But we haven't replaced the roof yet on the building, so we have a few leaks here and there. So <laughs> there's water everywhere. Yeah. People are saying uh, on Instagram, it looks like we're in the in a movie set of Saw, which I believe is a horror movie, and 
I think they're comparing all the, the water on the ground to blood, which is not happening, but uh, it's a different look for us than our, our previous shop. Right. It's a different look, but Nick, we're making it work. Absolutely. Now I have two wash pads in the bucket and I'm rotating between the two. Letting the incredible suds take off the, the dirt from one, sink it to the bottom of the bucket. How are the wheels looking, Nick? Fantastic. Good. I think the iron remover is doing a good job and there's probably more that I could do. Hitting the barrels with a cursory wash. The uh, customer is a busy mom and quite frankly, I, I think we're gonna deliver a lot of value with what we're doing as it is. Right, wheelbarrows or something she probably doesn't even know exist. And it's not a male, female thing, it's like, they're, uh, they're getting a free detail here. Yeah. Uh, they let us their car last second. Do you ever have that intuition that they've never seen the barrels in their life? They haven't? Based on the whole picture of the, the person and, and we really like them and everything, I just, it's not a Certain priority. Certain people don't detail their barrels with iron remover every week, you know, with the Kranzler pressure washer. And the, yeah, I, you know, I just, we're doing a, a fine job for them. Exactly. Detailing is not a priority for everyone. But if you enjoy detailing and you enjoy content like this, you know, there's that subscribe button just below here. You can go there, you can hit the subscribe button, you can hit the notification bell. And if you really like, ask us questions. We love answering your questions. Yeah, call me a hack since I'm not deeply cleaning the barrel. You know, I hit every other opening here with the barrel brush. I just, the wheel faces are clean. They look great. And that's all that most people care about. That's all that most people see. If it was your customer and they were paying you and said, get those barrels. Oh, you were getting those barrels. You're yeah. dialing them in. But when it's a freebie on a snowy night in <laughs> Omaha and they don't have a garage and you know where it came from and where it's headed to after this video. Yeah. You leave it at that. Barrels are not necessarily a priority at this point. It's gonna snow on this car in about three hours, but the beauty of it is it's gonna be protected, decontaminated. Ivan, as we finish up the wash here, I'm gonna add a little more suds because we're gonna be decontaminating this paint. Exactly. And we want a nice layer of incredible sods as the, as the foundation upon which we lay our decontamination towel. Definitely. So, and if this dries halfway through, before hitting it with a decontamination towel, we can add a little more of the incredible sods using those thick, luxurious wash mitts. Well, you washed the whole thing. I just wanted to get a little, a little feel for it. Pretend I was doing that myself, so. There you go. What I just did was pretty much unnecessary. We're out of direct sunlight. We're probably gonna be fine anyway. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, like I mentioned before. But if not, you know exactly what we're gonna be doing here, and that is the perforated synthetic decontamination towel, iron remover, and the incredible size is lube. Off we go. Not a clay towel, but it looks like one. In fact, it even says it's a clay towel on our website for purposes of search engine optimization, SEO. Right, because not everybody in the world knows to search for a perforated synthetic decontamination towel. So we have the bed of incredible suds. You might say, well, that's providing all this suds. It's actually a combination of that and our iron remover, which has a blend of surfactants that help create those suds, Ivan, but also lubricants to continue to work for us. And amazingly, so far, this vehicle is not that contaminated. It was a pretty smooth surface when I was washing, too, for yeah. just a second there. Yeah, there's a bit of contamination on the roof. Yeah, stand... horizontal surfaces will attract contamination. I stand correct. Or not con contamination, but uh, if you're under uh, you know, <laughs> trees outside, horizontal surfaces can attract bird droppings and all sorts of fun stuff. All sorts of fun stuff. And then it's your side panels that are gonna get a lot of that brake dust. Brake dust, road salt, and just stuff off the road. So a new panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray one on a fresh side of my towel and then one on the panel. And where you spray the iron remover is where you put your decon towel. And with no pressure whatsoever, relying on the towel and the incredible suds and the iron remover to do their thing, you just move the towel until it no longer gives you that scratchy sound and it feels smooth under your towel. And it's that easy. Don't forget the windshield and the windows. Don't forget to have fun. 
Exactly. And again, the less pressure you use on the towel, the better it's going to work. These side mirrors can often attract bug guts. And speaking of the leaking roof, I was standing right below a leak. Let me flip my towel to a fresh side, because there is a little bit of contamination on the roof here. Those of you that have used iron removers before, comment below. Do you really like the smell of an iron remover? I don't mind it, guys. I don't know why. It's foul, but it, uh, it says something to my system that progress is being made. Exactly. And using it this way, we're using A, a lot less than most people will use on a vehicle. We're not spraying it everywhere. So you're getting less of that odor in the air. And we still have a lot of the beautiful fragrance of incredible suds floating around in the air, which helps uh, break down that of the iron remover. You know, like you said, Ivan, this paint is not too contaminated. No, you know, other than the roof that had a, you know, the normal contamination on it, but the, the lowers here are nice and smooth, actually. You think it gets regularly decontaminated? Uh, not sure about that one. <laughs> Curious if you had a theory why. You never do know. After about four panels, I dunk my towel in a bucket with either rinseless wash or incredible suds in there, depending on what you're using. Or it could just be a bucket of water, honestly. And you've got four fresh sides again. Exactly. One on the towel, one on the paint. Oh, that's pretty nasty. Yeah, it's very... Uh random. This side of the roof actually has less contamination than the other side. So, Like you can hear here, nothing, and then... Just have patience. I'll often flip a side just to make sure it's not my towel, but of course it's not my towel. It's just this... Yeah. And now it is no longer scratchy. Soft and smooth. Yep. It should be. Did you get so, these two doors, Nick? Yep, those doors are done. Okay. Front fenders, front bumper. Front fenders, front bumper, the hood. Okay, the hatch is left. Yep, I'll do the hatch. The hatch is a pretty notorious spot for a lot of contamination, so I'm gonna take my time here, be nice and gentle, but again, you can kind of gauge it based on feel. If you're not on um, white paint, you won't see the purple streaks very often. So it's kind of a feel game here. I'll do one spray here, one spray there. While Nick is finishing up at the back, I'll start rinsing at the front and work my way back to him. So Nick, looking at the water behavior on this vehicle, and the fact that we're in Omaha, we're in the middle of winter, I think a, but a, a bit of water spot remover might be in order. That's a good idea. Now we call it water spot remover, but in reality, it's a mineral dissolver. And it's a further step in deep cleaning the paint. It's not a lot of work to add it on. We're literally just gonna spray it on a little bit, let it dwell, and do its thing. There are times when you can agitate it in, I don't think this is one of those times. I think we just spray it on, let it dwell, and rinse it off. But it's your call, Ivan. No, we'll just uh, spray and rinse. Yeah, it's a great spray and rinse product. If you're concerned about it, heavy water spot removal, um, if you're polishing after, go ahead and use your rinseless wash dampen towel, your incredible suds um, dampen towel. And you actually don't even need to change sides of your towel at that point. You just use the one side to work the water spot remover in. But it does work well when you spray on, let it dwell, and rinse off. Exactly. Kind of the bottle for you as well. Um, but you just want to make sure you're getting everywhere, right? With the towel, you're making sure that you agitate every spot. Perhaps I'm spraying willy-nilly. I'm doing the Nick thing. And I get a little distracted. I could miss a spot. Not the end of the world. Not a show car that we're uh, delivering for money, but... You want to do it the right way, you want to do it completely, just be thorough with your sprays. We'll let this dwell for a moment or two, and then rinse it away. 
And when we do rinse it away, we might actually see some water beating. Some kind of behavior that says, thank you for resurrecting me. I was exactly. clogged up. I wasn't having a good day. And then you two came along. And there's actually nothing in our water spot remover that causes beating. There's no sealant, there's no wax, there's nothing like that in it. It's just we're removing that little layer of minerals that is masking your paint. You don't see it, you don't feel it, but it's there. Absolutely. And the clay towel does not remove that. It's almost as if it wants to sheet. And it is very good. Is it? Yeah. I'll notice it more on uh, these vertical panels. Right. So rinsing from the top down. Look at that, Nick. This is gonna be the most comprehensive detail in Omaha on this night, I know it, because it is exactly. snowing outside. They're calling it Snowmageddon on the radio. And Nick's from Utah, I'm from Quebec. To us, a snowstorm starts at a foot and gets higher. There's a couple inches maybe, I haven't seen much. Ivan, mean, there's a little bit of water beating on the paint. Yeah, it's not sitting, uh, just hanging out like it was before. Now speaking of water beads, Nick, if you wanna spray some quick beads on that side, I'll be right back. Sure. Quick beads is our spray on, rinse off ceramic sealant, so check this out. How's my quick beads technique, Ivan? A little generous, but. All right, I'm, I'm trying. So it's a coordination thing. You okay. pull the trigger as you're moving. I, li I like doing the up and down. Can I pull this off? Yeah, that's fine. All right, I think I've done that. We'll do the roof here. So we're gonna do quick beads, Ivan, and then we're, and again, it's a little, it's a little nick here. It's, it's, it's generous, I like, to, I like to do a lot of product. We're doing the, uh, the quick beads and then the ceramic gloss. Talk about our strategy here. Well, the quick beads lays a great foundation. It's a great drying aid, and we are gonna be drying the vehicle. Then we'll be applying the ceramic gloss, but like you would a wax, old school wax of you putting it on with a machine. So it's a little different technique. Some people really like it. It's fun to do. We get to play with tools. Hey, that's always fun. There you go. Now for the quick beads, you'll notice I rinsed off the wheel and basically the whole goal of quick beads is to spread the quick beads. We're not trying to rinse it off the car. I'm actually trying to spread it. So to spread it, I'm gonna put my sprayer upside down here and spray on a 45 degree angle, starting at the back of the vehicle, working my way forward. And you'll notice a bit of a white froth looking. I wanna keep spraying until that white frothy look is gone. Now quick beads, you can use this with a pressure washer, but it's actually more effective when you use it with a garden hose. And then once I've done a complete side like this, I'm going to Rinse it down, that way I'm making sure I'm not leaving any excess quick beads on the surface, because the way Nick was spraying, there might be excess. Hey, I, I will say we were running a little low, so I was having some trigger issues, but okay. I I'm known to over-apply. And out there, if you're worried about over-applying and streaks, avoid direct sunlight when you're doing this, and if you're just solo and you don't have anyone else manning the hose, I would do maybe a few panels, and then hose off. I wouldn't go any more than that if I'm doing this outside. And for the hood, just like the side of the car, I'm moving up the panel. And that gives me more opportunity to spread the quick beads. Same thing on the windows. The water beading is very impressive on that hood now, isn't it? It is, it's you know the way water beading should be. It's decontaminated, we have ceramic protection on there. So again, the wheels, and then on a 45 degree angle, work my way down the side of the vehicle. And you see that white froth building up on the surface. We keep rinsing to not, till that white frothy look is gone. Did you get this uh, back window? Pardon me? Did you get this window as well? Yeah, okay. And then we rinse down. Just in case. And I'm always amazed at the beads that come after quick beads. I know it's literally in the name. Yeah. But this paint wasn't in the best of shape. No, this paint was not a candidate for, wow, look at that beading. And now it is. And on the roof, I'm gonna go from the back to the front. 
spreading as much of the quick beads as I can, and at the same time, the excess is gonna go down the windshield, giving me a second chance to get that windshield nicely coated. In case some of it went off the side, because I know it did, I'll just give this a quick rinse down the side. And look at that beading, it's just spectacular. Quick rinse down this side, hit the windshield one last time, and this is, this is pleasantly surprising, Ivan. Watching this pre-water spot remover to post quick beads. Yeah. I wanna show you a little something here, Nick. People ask, beading versus sheeting. Well, when we have a lot of water like here, it sheets off. Where I wasn't aiming the hose, we have these spectacular beads. We do. And if I wanted beading, I bring this down to less water and watch the beads just grow on the surface. We go from just a little bit of beads to bigger and bigger beads every time. It's gathering up the water, then the bead gets heavy enough that it just starts flowing down the paint. And beads can be really helpful because if you have dirt on your paint, it promotes self-cleaning. So you're right. gonna watch, I don't know, a dead bug gut or a piece of tree that fell on your paint or whatever. Yeah. As you drive away or as these beads come down, they carry it so they safely lift it off the surface. And that's why your vehicle is gonna stay cleaner longer when it's protected. Exactly, but look at these spectacular beads. And again, if we flood the panel, we can sheet the water off the surface. Excellent. So if you geek out on beads, comment below. You like beading, sheeting, ceramic gloss, quick beads, yeah. ceramic coatings, wax. Nick, as we get ready to dry, I'm actually not gonna use the drying towel to begin with. I'm gonna use a squeegee. No, you're not. But not on the paint, <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. I don't like walking around on a wet floor. It's not safe, first of all. Secondly, it's not fun having wet feet, so we'll get those feet dry. And look at the amazing drying that you've got going on. You're doing that Instagram towel pull. It's yeah. doing great. Look at that. Just the 50-50 there, boom. Yeah. And if you didn't want to do the polishing step that we're gonna be doing, you could actually be using ceramic gloss as a drying aid now for even better protection. But, but, but ceramic gloss on the, on the pad, how is that going to leave a better finish? Well, first of all, the pad just is a little abrasive by itself. So it is going to basically, for lack of a better term, work in the ceramic gloss deeper into the surface. And the pad by itself provides a bit of gloss. It's also doing a deeper dive in terms of cleaning. You guys, Quick Beads is such an amazing drying aid. Like, it is so slick under my towel right now. And that is not me just trying to sell you on Quick Beads. If you've used Quick Beads in the past, please comment below. And when I use the towel on a vertical panel like this, I'm gonna anchor it here at the top so that just in case I get sloppy with it, it's not gonna fall down this way. Or if I lose one hand, I've still got it anchored here. So I've got a redundancy built in with two hands uh, just in case. Cause you know, you're using an expensive drying towel often and we don't wanna hit it on the ground. And our floor may look a little grungy but it's about what, the 10th car we've done in here? It's been wetted down with soap, incredible suds, all sorts of uh, cleaning chemicals, some all clean and squeegeed many times. So in this square where the vehicle is, it's actually pretty clean. And we have about 10 roof leaks as well. Yes, and they just you know, appear today because of the, the uh, quote unquote snowstorm. Now Ivan, how dare I use my drying towel that I just used on paint on these wheels? Well, you did a good job cleaning the wheels, we hope. But yeah, no, nor normally Nick does a great job cleaning wheels. And your wheels are really not much dirtier than the rest of your vehicle. And if you did a good job cleaning them, they shouldn't get your towel dirty. Now the tires, that's another thing. You don't want to take your good drying towel to the tires themselves because there could be residual tire dressings and other gooey things on there. And I just cleaned the uh the wheel faces with this towel and there's nothing on there. Yeah, exactly. Did a good job. Congratulations. Thank you. Gold star on the way. Ivan, someone said they never see us cleaning door jams on camera. 
Do we clean door jams at DIY Detail? We do, depending on what the detail is and what we're doing. Uh, it's something that's a little tedious to do, takes a bit of time, and we don't want to be wasting your time. So just imagine us cleaning the door jams. When do you clean door jams and do you use your drying towel from paint on door jams or not? That depends how they are. But I like to use our waterless wash for door jams. It's a really useful tool for that. Just a, a nice towel, the waterless wash, and off you go. Waterless wash has emulsifiers in there, so it cleans really well, has a bit of ceramic in there, so it shines it up, but it's meant to be sprayed on a dry panel, and so it's, it's a safe way to hit those door jams. I tend to use a different towel than my nice drying towel on door jams. Strangely yeah. enough, because the wheels have already been cleaned. That's why I use this. But that door jam, usually it's the first time you're hitting it. Yeah. So a different towel is usually the better. Now off we go to applying ceramic gloss by machine. We're ready. I'm feeling ready. Now, you have two towels, I have two bottles of ceramic gloss. I think we should trade something here. Let's trade. Yeah. So Here, you can uh, have a towel. I'll take a bottle of ceramic gloss. You're gonna use our 25 millimeter dual action polisher. Way too much machine for this, <laughs> and yet it'll work just as well as a three millimeter orbit palm sander. Exactly. We're not trying to do paint correction here. We're not trying to do that. We're applying the ceramic gloss using the machine. And it's a very, very simple process. The first one, the first panel we're gonna do, we're actually gonna spray more than we need on the pad, which is two or three sprays. That way I'm sure the pad is covered everywhere. I did four, because yeah, I know how I roll. Because that's you. Uh, anyways, <laughs> then from there on low speed, so that's on the 21. If you're using that machine full speed, go ahead, not a problem. Okay. And then I'm on speed one and a half, maybe. Any pressure at all? Yeah, I'm using a lot of pressure. I've got two fingers on the machine now. And I'm just going over the surface, spreading out the ceramic gloss. No stress, no pressure. No defects are being gone after here. This is just spreading the polish, uh, ceramic gloss. Yeah. We're spreading the ceramic gloss. And when you start seeing it disappear into the surface, you take your towel and are amazed at the slickness. How often am I reapplying ceramic gloss to my pad? Am I cleaning my pad at all? What do I need to know about pad during so, this? At this point, we're not cleaning the pads. There's no need. And at the same time, you're only applying when you don't see ceramic gloss being laid down. So as you're moving the pad across the surface, if you see that you're not putting a layer of ceramic gloss on the surface, that's when you give it just one more spray. How you, many passes? Uh, two or three. It's, okay. Yeah. So it's, up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right is fine? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. So you're gonna do this side? Sure, I'll do this side. Yep. Oh, such a soft pad, Ivan. Yeah. This is a joy. This really is no effort, huh? Exactly. And I go until I don't see it anymore? You go until you almost don't see it anymore. So Nick, what did you learn today? Less product is actually better. I started with those four sprays on the pad. It was a little grabby for me with the ceramic gloss. I decided to listen to uh, Mr. Ivan here. I used one spray on the pad and subsequent applications, and I went faster with my passes. So fast passes, only two instead of three. I stopped thinking about it like I'm really polishing this paint and more I'm just like, I'm just glossing over a few times. Right. I'm laying it on there. I could feel like it was a little abrasive, so it was probably removing some oxidation. I mean, I don't know. We have the quick beads on there now, so I... Right, so the quick beads is there. The ceramic gloss, it's doing its thing. The two combining are really giving a really deep gloss on this. It's looking great. It looks awesome. But no detail is complete without... Tire lotion. Exactly. If you don't have a master blaster, if you don't have access to any kind of forced air, 
compressed air, whatever. Uh, you do want to dry the tire first, Ivan, before you apply tire lotion. Right. And this actually went faster than we thought it would, so the tires didn't have time to air dry. This is just an old towel. It's glory days are behind it. Right. If you want to hit that trim as well, Nick. Okay. So the trim is looking a little sad. This isn't a trim restore, but it is going to give it a little life for a couple weeks, making it look better. So I put four or five sprays on my brush to start. Then from there, using the brush, apply it to the tire. And the nice thing about the brush is I've got great control over where the bristles go. So I can just put it on the tire. I'm not putting it on the wheel or the rim or the mag or whatever you want to call it. And the same brush, just put one little spray, but just on one side. And then again, great control. I'm not getting it on the body of the vehicle, not getting it on the paint, but I am getting it everywhere on the trim that I need to get it. Like we say, this is not a lasting solution for the trim, but if you're cleaning your car on a regular basis and do this every two or three weeks, your trim is gonna remain nice. Now, if you do accidentally get a little bit on the body of the paint, not a big deal, it's gonna rub right off. Who's the guy that parked this right under our uh, ceiling drips, Ivan? I don't know, but they're sort of hard to avoid today. You know, this is a 70-year-old building. We just took possession of it. We uh, got all the previous owner's stuff out of here. Now it's time to put our things in, but we have some repairs to do before we do, but we are running out of content, so we decided to, let's do a back to basic series, things that are easy, quick to do, we don't need a pressure washer, and that we're able to detail a car without all the fancy stuff that we normally have. You know, Ivan, we do have another back to basics video that I think people will really like. So as you so assiduously and passionately apply that tire dressing, I invite other folks to continue the viewing experience right here.